Ancient Egypt was a civilization obsessed with the rituals of death. Some of the most amazing achievements ever created were built by the Egyptians, and nearly all of them were concerned with death and the afterlife. The pyramids, the great tombs, temples, and mummies. But it was not only people who were mummified. The ancient Egyptians also mummified animals. To discover why, Egyptologist and mummy expert Salima Ikram has traveled to the temple of Kom Ombo on the bank of the great river Nile. There probably was always a temple at Kom Ombo because generally sites where you see a temple, the temple is built there because that site has been sacred for hundreds and hundreds of years. The temple was dedicated to the crocodile god Sobek. The ancient Egyptians chose a lot of their gods based on the natural world, and crocodiles are large, terrifying things, so they wanted to appease them. Also, of course, anything that comes from the Nile or from water has a very sacred nature for the ancient Egyptians because one of their creation myths talk about how the world emerged from water. Sobek became among Egypt's most important deities. He really came into his own about 2000 BC when a lot of lakes were being used and there were crocodiles there and so any god associated with water and with power of fertility and virility like Sobek were all, beca all became sort of very important and that's when Sobek first started having major temples dedicated to himself. Crocodiles were allowed to roam freely around the temple in honor of the god. Not only did they have the traditional images of the god kept in a sacred place, but they also had live crocodiles here who were the personification of the god Sobek. And so people would come for miles and miles around to go and visit the god, to make offerings to the god, and also sort of to be in the presence of the deity himself. The crocodile was revered even after death. Here in a side room are the desiccated remains of an animal that once wandered in the temple. This priceless relic was once venerated by countless pilgrims. This crocodile has probably been dead for at least 2,000 years and maybe a bit more. Worshippers would also make offerings of mummified crocodiles to the gods. By giving a votive offering of a crocodile, what the worshipper does is, is offer something that is much more intimate to the god. And also, this little mummified crocodile acted as a sort of ambassador for the person for all of eternity. So you always had someone whispering to Sobek. The first stage of mummification is to immerse the body in natural salts to draw out the moisture. Without moisture, it cannot rot. When it is completely dry, it is coated in a preservative resin to bind the surface against deterioration. Preserving a reptile was relatively easy compared with catching one. Acquiring crocodiles must have taken some skill because crocodiles are enormous, very fierce creatures and you wouldn't want to be on the, the head end of them unless you really knew what you were doing. So I think acquiring the crocodiles was a, a great act of adventure and of faith. But even obtaining a little one posed a problem. There weren't enough to go around. One of the problems, of course, with having so many pilgrims wanting to give votive mummies as offerings is that sometimes the demand exceeded the supply. The priests of Kom Ombo Temple were forced to improvise. Some of the crocodile bundles do not contain what they're supposed to contain. They might contain a fragment of it, or else they might contain a piece of, of wood or a stone or even a fragment of a human body part, but wrapped up to look as if it actually is whatever creature is supposed to be being offered. No one would know what was really inside. On the whole, the better wrapped and the more beautiful the exterior of a mummy, the more likely it is that inside there's going to be a fake because it's almost as if the priest was saying, oof, we're feeling really guilty, now we have to make it look perfect because inside it is imperfect, so at least the exterior must be a manifestation of what it's supposed to be. Still, there is ambiguity in the deception. For the priests, certainly, they could hold these two ideas in their minds at the same time, not really feel terribly fraudulent about it. But I think if the pilgrims had really known they didn't have crocodiles inside their pseudo-crocodile mummies, they would have been quite upset. 
100 years ago, the American explorer Henry Welcome discovered a perfectly preserved example of a mummified crocodile, one he believed to be a fake. But is it? The specimen is kept at the Egypt Center of Swansea University in Britain. We do have whole live crocodiles that have been mummified, but on the other hand, we also have an awful lot of fakes. Veterinary surgeon Emma Littler has been called in to look inside this ancient relic using an X-ray machine. For the first time in 2,000 years, the crocodile mummy will give up its secret. We will know what is inside it. So we can know once and for all, hopefully, whether or not there was a real crocodile in there or whether it is just a bag of sand. And what we see is there is definitely yep, something in there. Absolutely really clear. There we are. You can see here the outline of the, the head. Um, and this is just the first two sections, so it's actually embedded in, or it's inside the first so two sections. It starts from that's about it. there, does it? That yeah, that's right. And there's there nothing backwards. in this. There's, there's a couple of ways, there's nothing in the tail. This remarkable artifact does indeed contain the remains of a crocodile that once swam the waterways of ancient Egypt over 2,000 years ago. It is not a fake, but a genuine messenger to the gods. This discovery reveals the lengths that man will go to perform rituals of death. To capture and mummify dangerous beasts as well as allowing them to roam freely in a sacred temple demonstrates the ancients' reverence toward death.